When you judge, when you look at the world, when you decide what things mean, be patient. Episode number 100. Welcome to the Torah Podcast. Lessons from authentic Judaism. Get the tools and inspiration you need for personal growth. Hosted by Rabbi Mitterhoff. Shalom, this is Rabbi Elio Mitterhoff with this week's Torah Podcast. Since we already came to episode 100, I've decided to change gears a little bit. I'm going to try something a little bit different. Instead of speaking on the weekly Parsha, I've decided to speak on Parkiavos. When I asked Rav Aaron Chadash of the Mir which Musr Sefer I should teach, he told me the most important Musr Sefer is Perkeyavos. It's learned in all the schools, everybody knows it, and it's very popular. So we're going to start with Perkeyavos. But before you learn Perkeyavos, there's a Mishnah that you say. It's the first Mishnah in chapter 10 of Sanhedrin that goes like this. Call Yisrael yesh lem chelek all of the Jewish people have a portion in the world to come. Shinamar, like it says, kulam sadikim. Your people are all righteous. Le'alom Yeshua Eretz. They will inherit the land forever. A sapling of my planting, my handiwork in which to glory. This is the Mishnah that we say before we start to learn Berkiyavos. Now, why do we learn this Mishnah? So the Bartanor explains, he says like this, Yisrael yeshlem All the Jews have a portion in the next world. Even those Jews who are supposed to get the death penalty, they still have a portion in the next world. And which world to come are we referring to? He says, the world to come after Tichia Samesim. After the resurrection of the dead, there's going to be a world to come that's going to last forever. Shasidim in the future. We're going to rise with our bodies and our souls. Chaim Nitzchim. We're going to live forever. Like the moon and the stars. But in the next world, there's not going to be any, any eating or drinking. Even though we have a body, there's not going to be eating and drinking. How are we going to live? The righteous people are going to sit with crowns on their heads. And we're going to derive sustenance from the presence of God. The ziv, the light that comes off of God, that's going to nourish us. This is unbelievable. But since that not every Jew is equal, rather there are great people and there are small people, mushum haki katani yesh lem chelech We have a portion in the next world. How big our portion is going to be, that depends on how we behave ourselves here. A lot of people don't know, a lot of secular Jews don't even know that the Jews believe in the next world. I get that question all the time. Do the Jews believe in the next world? Of course we believe in the next world. The whole Torah is based on the next world. And the other Mephoshim explained the reason why we read this Mishnah before we read Parkiavos, which is talking about our character traits, is that we shouldn't be Mityayish. Even a Rashi, even an evil person, he still has a portion in the next world. So of course, if we fix ourselves up, we're going to have even a greater portion. So now the first Mishnah in Parkiavos reads like this. Moshe kibel Torah Sinai. Moses received the Torah from Sinai. Umasar le Yeshua, and he handed it over to Yeshua. For Yeshua le Zakanim, and Yeshua handed over the Torah to the elders. For le Zakanim and Nevi'im, and the elders handed it over to the prophets. For Nevi'im, Masura la Anche Knesset Gadola, and the prophets handed it over to the men of the great assembly. Vehem Amru Shalosh Tavarim, and the Anche Knesset Gadola said three things. Hevu matunim bedin, weigh your judgments carefully. Vaamidu tamadim harbe, and establish many students. Vaaso saig Torah, and make a fence for the Torah. So the Tefer Shisrael says on these words, Moshe kibel Torah. What does that mean? 
It appears to me the Mechila Kabbalah Satora Shelo Yakshuv Adam the Sagi Lishlumus Nafsho. It appears to me that in the beginning, when the Jews received the Torah, they might have thought it would have been enough to just keep the Torah. And if they keep the Torah, then they're going to get the next world. The Lesa, it's not true. Why? The Kasha on Shin Shamidos. Because it's not enough just to do the mitzvahs, but we also have to have good character. Like Chazal says, the Osek B'Toyra, someone who is involved and lives Torah, and he doesn't behave properly in business, and he's not nice to people, oy lo, oy vavoy, he's going to get punished. So he says, Shagam derech eretz toirihi, derech eretz, acting properly, that's also called Torah. And the way to act was also received from Sinai. We also received how to behave ourselves in this world that was also given at Har Sinai. The im ain't Torah, ain't derech eretz. Because Chazal tells us that if you don't have Torah, you don't have Derek Heretz. So how to behave was also handed to us at Har Sinai. And the Bartanura continues in the same line. He says, also among the nations, they had great people who wrote about character traits and how a man should behave with his friend. Therefore, the first Tana, the Tana in the Mishnah, in our Mishnah, in Parkiyavos, that says, Moshe Kibil Torah with Sinai, in other words, that the mitos, the character traits, and the musa, the rebuke, shibazu, in this sefer, he wanted to tell us right off the start that this did not come from the laves of our sages. Rather, where did it come from? Af elu namar b'sinai. It came directly from God. This Sefer that we're about to learn is not filled with advice on how to behave based on human reasoning. It also came from God. It's not just the ideas of people of what they think is right and wrong and how to behave based on customs or who knows what. No, this was received also from Sinai. The way that a Jew behaves, it also has to be based on Torah. And the Tiferet Yisrael explains, why does the Mishnah start that Moses received the Torah from Sinai? Because Sinai was the lowest of mountains. That's where he received the Torah. And just like Moshe Rabbeinu had tremendous anava, so he also received the Torah on the smallest of mountains to teach us what? Lahar is derech al anava, to teach us the ways of being humble. Why? Because humility is the source of all good character traits. This is what he says. The most important character trait, according to Tiferet Yisrael, is anava. If you're humble, that will lead to good character. So now the question is, which Torah was given at Sinai? So all the Mephoshim explain, not only was the Torah, the written Torah, given at Sinai, but also the oral Torah was also given at Sinai. This is Rabbeinu Yonah says. Both of them. Why? Because it's impossible to understand the Torah Biktav, the written Torah, without the oral tradition. Like he says, it says the word Lot Tigzo, don't steal. All the dins of damages are inside, don't steal. There's tons of particulars. How are we going to know all the particulars just from the words don't steal? Like it's written, between blood and blood, between din and din. If we didn't have explanations of what these things mean, how would we know which way to go? So we received everything at Sinai, not just the Torah Shabiktav. And the Rabbeinu Bachi takes it even one step further. He says, All of the books, all of the Nevi'im, all the Kesuvim, everything that was written in the Torah was given at Sinai. The only difference was it, was it was in an oral form and it wasn't given permission to write until the Nevi'im came into the world and they were able to write it. And in their generation, they wrote it with Ruach HaKodesh. In other words, it was received at Sinai and later the Nevi'im wrote it with Ruach HaKodesh. And the Vayikra Rabbah that says like this, whatever novel Torah insight a diligent student may derive was already transmitted at Sinai. This is unbelievable. 
In other words, everything that a good student could produce from learning Torah, that was also given at Sinai. And therefore, the Svah Semis wants to say that all of the scholars, whatever they mention in this Perkyavos, was Divrei Torah that was given originally at Sinai. So the Mishnah continues and it says that Moshe Rabbeinu handed over the Torah to Yeshua. So the Meiri explains, which Torah did he give over to Yeshua? The Torah Shabbat Bay. Why? Shetor Bektav Kavar Katov Moshe. Chayav. Yud Bey Sifrei Torah. Moshe wrote 12 Sefer Torah and he handed it over to the Shvatim. So what did he give over to Yeshua? He gave over the Torah Shabbat Bay. And Rabbeinu Bachia says on that, Tine Moshe Moshe Torah Shabbat Bay, Lo Yeshua, Mashbiya Bal, and he also influenced him. Just like the light that shines on the moon comes from the sun, so too Moshe gave the light of the Torah over to Yeshua. Like it says, the penei of Moshe was like the sun, the light of Moshe's face was like the sun, and the light of Yeshua's face was like the moon. And Rashi asks, Lama Neomar Moshe Yeshua. Why was the Torah given specifically from Moshe to Yeshua? It could have been given to Eliezer or Pinchas. And it could have been given to the Shivim Zechenim or the 70 elders. Why was it given to Yeshua? The answer Rashi says is, Shalorot say le Moshe Eli, he'd only wanted to give it to someone who killed himself from his youth in the tent of wisdom. And he acquired for him a shame tov. And Moshe only wanted to give over the Torah as someone who sat from his youth in the, in the halls of wisdom. And that's why it's specifically Yeshua. And then the mission continues and it says, Yeshua gave over the Torah to the Zakanim. So Rashi says on that, that those same Zakanim, they handed it over, Lako Zakanim Shehu called Dorvador. In other words, once it was given to the Zakanim, it continued for many, many generations until it reached the level of the Nevi'im. And then the Nevi'im gave it over to the Anshe Knesset Gadola, to the Great Assembly. Rabbeinu Yonis says on this, it was received from wise person to wise person. And then what happened? They gathered together all the Chochmah Yisrael, all the wise people, and they got together to produce advice. Mepikulam. Laktav Torah Shabbat Pei, to write down the Torah Shabbat Pei. At this point, they had to write it down because it was going to be lost. And they wrote and they sealed the Talmud. And after this, At that point, after the Torah Shabbat Pei was written down, it couldn't be added to or taken away from. And then after that, it was handed over to the Gaonim, which is not written in the Mishnah. Once the Torah Shabbat Pei was written down, it was handed over to the Gaonim, and it was handed from Gaon to Gaon. Rav mipi Rav arayom azeh. From one rabbi to the next rabbi until today. So the Torah that we have today is the same Torah that was given at Sinai. And it's been passed down from generation to generation. And the same Torah that our children learn is a Torah that we learn. If you go to a base midge, you'll see everybody has a Gemara open. The same Gemara that a 13-year-old kid is learning, an 80-year-old man is also learning. It's absolutely amazing. Now the Mishnah continues and says that they said three things. So the Bartzenor asks, Harbe Devai Mamru. They said a lot of things. Why these three? Rather, these three things that they said are the things that are needed to kayam the Torah, to keep the Torah going through all the generations. These are the three things that we need to weigh our judgments carefully, to establish many students, and to make offense for the Torah. So now we're going to explain these one by one. So the Teferis Israel explains that these three things don't only apply to Torah scholars, they apply to everybody. When a person has to make a decision, he has to judge carefully before he makes a decision. He has to look at the person that he's dealing with and decide whether that person is a righteous person or not a righteous person. Do I want to do business or not with him? And he shouldn't always think that he's right and that his kids are always right. And just like he's going to educate his own kids and care about his own kids, he has to care about other people's kids. That's what it means to have many Talmidim. 
to help society. Uh, what does it mean, Saig the Torah? To make offense for the Torah? He has to make sure he protects himself from sin. To not go to places where there's going to be trouble. So these rules don't only apply to establishing the Torah for Dayanim, for judges and rabbis, but every human being has to establish the Torah in his own way, in the way that he can. So Rashi explains, what does it mean to weigh your judgments carefully? He says, Lashen mamtinin, to wait. Shiloh yihu gomrim adin bimheira. You shouldn't be quick to judge people. You have to go deep in your mind to see if you're really looking at the situation in the right way. And the Rambam says a similar thing. He says, you shouldn't be quick to judge. Why? Because it's possible if you wait, you will reveal things that you didn't see before. In other words, don't be quick, slow down. You want to make a decision, you have to slow down. Because the more you slow down, the more you're going to see things that you didn't see before. This is what the Rambam says. And the Bartanur says the same thing. And so does Rabbi Leona. Listen to what Rabbi Leona says. One who is hasty in his rulings is called negligent. If you judge too fast, you're negligent. Even if you're sincerely to judge correctly, it's considered karov lemezid, close to intentional. He should have reminded himself that a hasty decision is likely to be inaccurate, that all human error is too common. As it said, we allow judgment to ferment, because through deliberation and waiting, reasoning is added to reasoning, and analysis to analysis, until finally you can arrive at an accurate ruling. Thinking things through a second time, he says, uncovers new ideas and insights. So this is the first thing that the sages said in order to makayim, in order to establish a Torah. Don't be hasty to make decisions. Wait. The longer you wait, the more you think, the clearer the decision is going to be. And now the second thing is to establish many students. Rashi says, even when you're old, because you don't know which of your students are going to come out good. And that's why learning and teaching Torah is a great job, because you could do it even to your old. Even when you're old, you should continue to teach. That's what Rashi says. And Rabbi Obachi says that by increasing students, you also increase Torah. You widen the Torah. And not only that, but the teacher becomes wiser. Like it says, Much did I learn from my Rabbanan, but I learned the most from my Talmidim. So the more students you have, the wiser you're going to be. And the Tosvos Yom Tov explains, why does it say, Amidu Talmidim Harbe? Stand up a lot, a lot of Talmidim. So he wants to explain, Kaloma, in other words, La Amidim Aregleim, stand them up on their feet, that they should understand and have a grasp of the Torah. That's what it means to stand, why they have truth. Ki Sheker ain't lo Reglaim. Sheker doesn't have legs. Lies have no legs to stand on. Stand them up in truth. Make a lot of Talmidim. Spread the Torah. Make them know the truth. And the Bartanur wants to explain this is coming against Rav Gamliel, who said, Call Talmid she'eno tochu Any student who is inside and is outside are not equal. Don't let him into the base midrash. The Bartanur wants to say against that. He's saying, even if the guy is not 100%, let him into the base midrash. Like Shittas base Hillel, not like Shittas base Shammai. Let him into the base midrash. Get Talmidim. Teach Torah to everyone. Because that's the thing that's going to heal them. That's the thing that's going to make them straight. And the last thing that the Mishnah said was to make offense for the Torah. What does that mean? So Rashi explains, it means, You have to make offense not to come close to a real Isser Torah. You have to protect yourself, to keep away that you shouldn't do a real sin. And Rabbeinu Baki gives an example of that. Like we know, on Erev Pesach, for example, it's forbidden from the Torah to eat Erev Pesach, bread, after the sixth hour, what did the Chacham come along and do? They said, no, you have to stop eating by the fourth hour. That's an example of making offense for the Torah. Since an the rises from the sixth hour, came along the rabbis and said, no, you can't eat from the fourth hour. Because maybe somebody's going to make a mistake in the time and they're going to wind up eating and they're going to be over an avera, a sin from the Torah. That's what it means to make offense. 
And by making fences, that's also an aspect of establishing the Torah. But Rabbeinu Yonah says even one step further. He says, unbelievable. One who acts in accordance with these enactments shows a greater love of God. The person who keeps the fences of the Torah shows even a greater love for God. The rabbinic fences are designed to keep us at a safe distance from any possibility of sin. Taking special care to observe them indicates a greater degree of reverence and fear of God than observing the mitzvah itself. The the, Rabbanans, the the things that the rabbis establish are even greater than the mitzvahs themselves because it shows your fear of God and it shows the love that you have for God that you really don't want to even come close to a sin. The words of the sages are the root and tree of the fear of heaven, which is the main purpose in the universe, he says, and the foundation of go- all good attributes. Fear of God is man's purpose in the world, and it's the foundation of good attributes. It's connected with another, with humility. If you fear God, you're a humble person. This is the thing that's going to give you good character. Like the Midrash says, your beloved are better than wine, and the words of sages are more precious than the wine of the Torah. Now these three things that the Mishnah brought are not just ethics, they're also halachas. Listen to this halacha. The Rambam says you have to be matinus bohara. Surika dayan leyoz matun bedin. A, a judge has to be diligent in, in din, and he has to work back and forth until it's clear like the sun. And a person who jumps and gives a law before it's clear to him, this person is called a fool, a rasha, an evil person, and a gas ruach, and an arrogant person. That's one halacha. And there's another halacha. You have to have Talmidim. What does that mean? Chayv Adam Lomod as a Bino B'Torah. Every man is obligated to teach his son Torah. That's also a Talmud. And just like a man is Chayv to teach his son Torah, he's also Chayv to teach his grandchildren Torah. You're also responsible to make sure that your grandchildren know Torah. And not only your children and your grandchildren, but it's a mitzvah and every wise person from Yisrael to teach many Talmidim. Even young people who are not his sons. So you see, it's a halacha. And the last thing is make a fence for the Torah. A based in who sees that people are going off are obligated to make a fence from the Torah to stop the people from going off. Like the sages made eating chametz from the fourth hour, even though it's only forbidden to rise from the sixth hour. So these things are actual halachas, they're laws. Now Rav Chaim Velazhin wants to say that these three things apply to three different aspects in man. What does it be to be deliberate in judgment? That's talking about your thoughts. And what does it mean to spread Torah to many Talmidim? That's going according to your words. And what does it mean to say a Torah? That's according to your Maisin. These three things correct a man in his thoughts, in his words, and in his actions. And the Ma'ara wants to explain that these three things are going according to three different parts of his seichel, of his intelligence. He says, the Keneged Chokma Bina Vedas. I'll explain. The first thing which has to do with Chokma, wisdom, Shehu Svar is Halev. That has to do with Svara. Are you in reality or not in reality? When you make a decision, is your decision in reality? Vashenihu Huba Pilpul. The second one has to do with Bina and going back and forth, and seeing many different aspects in what you're about to decide, to see the thing within the thing. And the last one has to do, which means making a fence around the Torah, is if you're missing information. If you're missing information, you have to protect yourself. You have to stay away from an avera because you don't even know what the law is. So at the end of the day, this is what it takes to establish a Torah, but also the Torah in ourselves. What's the Torah? The Torah is the rot zone of God. How are we going to do God's will? So first, we have to weigh our judgments, the way we look at the world. How are we going to live like a righteous person? The only way to do it is to have patience. That's what all the Mepharshim said. When you judge, when you look at the world, when you decide what things mean, be patient, be relaxed. If a person is not relaxed, he's not in reality. That's what it has to do with the svara. It has to do with svara, being in reality. In order to do God's will, you have to be in reality, which means forget about your stories and what you think things mean on a first glance. The Abbas de Ravinasan says, Adam matin b'devarav, 
What does it mean to be deliberate in judgment? Don't be makpi, don't be strict. Because anyone who's strict is not going to see reality. You're making up a story. If you want to live a good life, and you have to be relaxed. And if you're relaxed, you'll see reality. That's stage number one. Stage number two, once you see reality, you have to spread reality. You have to spread consciousness. You have to see good in people. How are you going to see good in people? If you see good in people, then you can spread good, which means make a lot of Talmudim, be connected with society, and spread the Torah. And the last thing is to protect yourself from sin. Just because you're going to spread Torah, but you have to be careful also. There's people out there in the world who are not good. There's people out there in the world who you can't be connected to because they don't want to listen to you. They want nothing to do with the Torah. You try your best, like the Pesach said, Talmidim Harbe, against Reb Gamliel, who said, someone who's not talking Gaboro, his inside is not like his outside. But if the people are not interested in the clown, then they don't want, you can't can't be connected with them. You have to protect yourself from sin. So through these three things, we can come to establish a Torah not only in ourselves, but in the world. And we can spread Torah, which is the will of God. Okay, that's it for this week's podcast. Bizrat Hashem, next week we'll do the second Mishnah. Thank you for listening. To get more enthusiasm for your Judaism, become a free member at globalyeshiva.com.